Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to remind you that trigonometry was called trigonometry because it helps to solve different problems about triangles, right? I mean, that was the original purpose of trigonometry. So, after all these lectures about the properties of trigonometric functions, etc., well, let's try to do something which trigonometry was supposed to do, which is just solve a few problems um, related to geometry of triangles. Well, first of all, to, to state these problems, I will need certain symbol, symbols. So let me just introduce some standard which I will try to adhere to um, wherever possible. And uh, I think it's a good standard to, uh, to call the same elements of the triangle with uh, similar letters. And I do recommend you to do exactly the same. So the way how I will um, uh, use the symbols is the following. So if I have a triangle, my usual way of calling the vertices uh, is with the capital Latin letters. Now, the sides will be called um, with the corresponding lowercase letters, the side which is opposite to vert uh, vertex A will be called lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, and the angles, um, I will also use the sequence of the same the similar letters in, in Greek alphabet, which is alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, next, um, there are um, different elements of the triangle which I will also use. Now, these are, well, the first three major elements are median um, uh, uh, angle bisector um, and altitude. So, if this is an altitude, I will usually call it H A. Uh, the length of this um, altitude. Now, if uh, H because it's the height, basically, and A because it falls on the um, side called A. Now, the median, let's say the me median from the uh, vertex B, it goes to the middle of this. The length of this median I will call uh, uh, lowercase m with, oh, I'm sorry, it's on the B side, so it would be B, the suffix B. So the median is MB, correspondingly MA or MC, and the altitude is also, this is HA, and obviously this would be HB, and this would be HC. And now the angle bisector, let's say the angle bisector of this, I will use the letter lowercase l, and in this case, suffix will be C, because it falls on the side C. Um, the radius of circumscribed circle, I will use letter R, and inscribed lowercase r. Well, sometimes it's written like this, whatever you prefer. I prefer this. Um, and other elements I will basically introduce uh, on the ongoing basis. But these are standards which I would like to state once. And then I can basically present the problem uh, something like this. And this will be the first problem which I'm going to solve today, is this one. Prove that in any triangle, A minus B times A plus B times sine gamma equals to C squared sine a minus b, no, sorry, alpha minus beta. Now, what does it mean? Well, obviously a and b are two sides. c is the third side. Gamma is an angle which is opposite to the vertex c, and alpha and beta are angles opposite to vertices a and B correspond to. So that's what I would like to prove. Now, um, there are already a couple of things which uh, I have mentioned in the previous lecture, one of the previous lectures. 
um, the law of sine and the law of cosine. Now, you remember, if you don't, then go to the corresponding lectures, that the law of sine is this. And again, I'm using my uh, symbolics, which I have just introduced. This is law of sines. Now, um, I, I think uh, it was one of the lectures in the um, trigonometric identities chapter. Uh, so go to unisor.com and uh, in the trigonometric identities you will find the lecture which is devoted to the law of, co uh, of sines. And there is another one which is devoted to the law of cosines. So these two, the law of sines and the law of cosines, square of any side is equal to sum of the squares of other two sides minus double their product and cosine of the angle between them. So these two actually are the first um, usages of the trigonometry uh, in the geometry of the triangles. And I will definitely use these uh, two laws, these two theorems which I have proven in that other lecture which I just uh, mentioned to you to uh, solve this problem. So how can I, using this particular law of science, because it looks like this is a sign, this is a sign, it looks like law of science should be um, used in this case. How can I do it to prove this particular equation? Well, using the law of science, I can express A in terms of C and sine of uh, alpha and sine of gamma, right? Uh, C sine of alpha divided by sine of gamma, right? And similarly B. It's sine of beta divided by sine of gamma. Now, using this, I can substitute it in these cases, and that would basically um, transform my original equation which I have to prove into something simpler, obviously, because it's only because there is no um, extra variables here. Um, now, also, I um, I have to mention another interesting property. Now, you know that the sum of angles in any triangle is 180 degrees, right? Pi. So, sine of gamma is equal to sine of pi minus alpha minus beta. Let me write it differently, right? Which is the same thing. Now, what is a sine? Sine uh, is, uh, as you remember, is ordinate of the point on the unit circle. This vertical thing is ordinate, and obviously, if this is uh, some kind of angle phi, this would be angle. Uh, uh, now, if, if you count it this way, it also would be phi, right? Now, this angle is, it's pi minus phi, right? And the ordinates are obviously the same. We've proved many, in many cases that the sine of pi minus some angle is equal to sine of this angle. So, that's another thing which I'm going to use instead of sine of gamma. So all the left part I will express in terms of C, sine alpha, and again, instead of sine gamma, I will use sine of alpha plus beta. So all will be in terms of C, alpha, and beta. And let's see if I will get an identity in this case, because everything else seems to be just dependent on these three variables, of, uh, two angles and, and the side. Geometrically, by the way, it's worth mentioning that if this is C, this is alpha, and this is beta, this is gamma, this is uh, A, uh, B, and C, right? So you know that triangle can be constructed using some three elements, like for instance a side, and two angles which are adjacent to this side, right? So. That's actually three independent 
elements which basically define a triangle. So it's not a surprise that I will need exactly three elements to express all other elements. So I need alpha, beta, and C to express all other elements in terms of these elements. So that's what I'm going to do. I will take three independent variables, in this case C, alpha, and beta, and express everything in these terms, and then see if I will get an identity. Now, this expression is um, invariant. I don't lose any uh, specific values because it's a triangle, which means none of the angle is equal to zero, and all angles are less than pi, right? So it has geometric sense in this case. It's a triangle. So there is nothing wrong with dividing by sine of gamma. Um, it cannot be equal to zero. So this is um, an invariant transformation, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll substitute it over there, and here is what I have. Okay, alpha minus beta and alpha plus beta. Well, obviously, C over sine of gamma, I can uh, take out, factor out uh, of the parentheses, and I will have C divided by sine of gamma, which now I will replace with sine of alpha plus beta, as you know, right? Since alpha plus beta is pi minus gamma, or gamma is equal to pi minus alpha plus beta, and sinuses are the same. Um, in, inside, I will have sine alpha minus sine beta times sine alpha plus sine beta. Now, since I have a and b here, and a and b here, it would be square and it would be square, right? So, sine of alpha over gamma would be from, R, from a, and um, I mean C over sine of gamma would be from A, and C over sine of gamma would be uh, from B, and uh, these I take out of the parentheses, and this guy have exactly the same thing, so I have the C square and C, uh, C square and sine square. So that's on the left. And sine of gamma, which is basically uh, another sine of uh, alpha plus beta, so I can just completely wipe out this square, right? That would be fine too. So this is my left part. After I substitute it instead of sine of gamma, sine of alpha plus beta, and instead of A and B, I substitute these values. That would be on the left. Now, sine of alpha plus beta, again, is not equal to zero, because it's exactly the same as the sine of the third angle, gamma, which is not equal to zero. So everything is fine, everything has meaning. Um, okay, so I have to prove that this is equal to C square sine of alpha minus beta. Okay, how can I prove that? Well, obviously I can um, reduce this C square, it's not equal to zero, so no problem. And they have only trigonometric um, expression which I have to prove, trigonometric equality, which I have to prove. So is this an identity with any angles alpha and beta from 0 to pi? Not equal to 0 and not equal to pi. Well, obviously we can uh, multiply both sides by sine of alpha plus beta, and it will be here. So identity which I have to prove is this one. Now, I multiply sine minus sine and sine plus sine as sine square minus sine square, right? You know, that x square, uh, x minus y times x plus y is x square minus y square, right? So I have this on the left. On the right, I have sine of alpha minus beta times sine of alpha plus beta, right? So this is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. That's this one. And this one would be the same thing with a plus. So again, I have x minus y and x plus y. So it's basically x squared minus y squared. That would be on the right. Well, obviously, I have to replace um, cosine beta with 1 minus sine. 
So I will have everything, and cosine alpha with one minus sine. So I will have on the right sine square alpha times one minus sine square beta minus sine square beta. Now, uh, um, instead of cosine square, I will have one minus sine square alpha. So what exactly? Now, the left part is the same. Now, here I have sine squared times 1, which is sine squared alpha, minus sine squared alpha sine squared beta, minus sine squared beta. And now minus and minus, it would be plus sine squared alpha and sine squared beta. As you see, this is reducible, and I have sine squared minus sine squared, exactly what I have to prove. And these all invariant transformations, so it goes both ways without any problems, and that's the end of the proof to the first problem. So what I did use here is a theorem uh, which is called the law of signs. It helped me to express all elements of the triangle involved in this particular uh, problem through three independent um, variables. And in this case, it's one side, which is C, and two angles uh, adjacent to this side. And then basically everything else is technicality. Next problem. OK, express A, B, and C in terms of R, alpha, beta, and gamma. R is the radius of circumscribed circle, and alpha, beta, and gamma are angles, obviously. OK, so if you have a circumscribed circle around the triangle, A, B, C, uh, alpha, beta, gamma. This is the center. So let's use this one. So this is R, this is R, and this is R. Okay? Now, look at this. Angle beta is supported by this arc, right? Angle AOC is a central angle, which is supported by the same arc. So this is inscribed angle. This is the center angle. And uh, you know that the center angle is twice as much as um, the inscribed angle, right? So angle AOC is equal to 2 beta. This is 2 beta. Now, correspondingly, this is 2 gamma and this is 2 alpha, obviously, for the same reason. Now, if I draw a perpendicular from the center to a point M, which is middle of the AC, now this perpendicular would obviously divide my um, isosceles triangle AOC into 2 rectangle, uh, into 2 um, right triangles, sorry because this is perpendicular, right? So these are right angles. So my isosceles triangle by uh, an altitude from the, from the top would be divided into two right triangles, obviously um, congruent to each other. Um, well, because the sides are the same and, and the, the hypotenuses are the same and the catheters is, uh, is, is common, they're sharing it. So, um, angle AOM is half of the angle AOC, so this is beta and this is beta, right? Now, and AM is obviously half of AC. So, angle AOM is equal to beta, and AN is equal to half of B, 
right? This is the side B, lowercase b, opposite to the vertex B. Well, obviously, we can um, calculate the lengths of AM in terms of hypotenuse and an angle using the definition of, uh, of the sine in this case. So, obviously, AM divided by AO is a sine of beta. So, AM, which is one-half B, is equal to hypotenuse, uh, which is R, uh, times sine of this angle AOM, which is beta. From here, B is equal to 2R sine beta. And very similarly, obviously, A is equal to 2R sine alpha, and C is equal to 2R sine gamma. Exactly the same logic can be in this triangle or in this triangle. So this is how the sides are expressed in terms of radius of um, the circumscribed circle and angles. Now, let me go back to um, the law of sines. Law of sines says that A over sine of A uh, of alpha is equal to B over sine of beta equal to C over sine of gamma. Now I can put equals to 2R, right? So this ratio, which we had established before as being the same for all three sides and all three angles, is not just some abstract number, whatever that number might be, God knows what it is. It's basically a diameter, 2R is a diameter of a circumscribed circle. So it has a geometric sense. So any uh, side divided by an op the sine of the opposite angle gives you the diameter of the circumscribed circle. That's actually an interesting, you know, kind of unexpected geometrical interpretation of, of this ratio. Okay. Next. Well, I usually mention it at the very beginning of every lecture, but let me mention it in the, in the middle. Um, most of the problems which I'm presenting to you don't make any kind of a practical uh, interpretation or sense or anything like that. They are only for your exercise of your ingenuity, your creativity, and basically ability to solve something which you have not really um, faced before. So, again, I'm categorically against the education when, when the teacher is, is saying, okay, this is the problem, this is the solution, use it wherever you can, because most of these problems will never be occurring in, in the real practice. It's important for you to make uh, some kind of a way to, to, to solve the problem. So that's why I'm always encouraging you, before you're listening to the lectures which I am presenting here, try to solve these problems yourself. That's very, very important. That's the most important, actually. Because if you don't, if you just listen to these lectures without trying to solve something yourself, it's basically useless. Okay, now, another problem. Here is your triangle. And uh, here are three altitudes. Let's call this point H. Now, what's necessary to solve, uh, to, to, to prove actually, that radiuses of circumscribed circles around triangles AHC, triangle BHC, and triangle uh, AHB, so AHC triangle, BHC triangle, and AHB triangle. So these three triangles have the same radius of a circumscribed circle. But well, it's obviously not, you know, just looking at the picture you don't see it. 
Um, so one circle would be, you know, something like this, another would be here, and the third one would be there. Why are they uh, supposed to have the same radius? It's not obvious at all. However, let's just think about it. Now, these are perpendiculars, right? Now, let's consider, let's say, uh, M and P, okay? Let's consider a triangle B and H and triangle A P H. So this triangle and this triangle. Okay? Now, obviously these angles are vertical. These angles are right. So these angles are equal to each other. So angle uh, H B C equals H A C. So this angle is equal to this angle. Now, let's consider now a triangle uh, BHC, this one, and triangle H AHC, and this one. These two triangles. So it's this and this. These are two triangles which I have to prove uh, this property that the radius of the circumscribed circle uh, is the same. Now, they share the side HC, right? And the, uh, these triangles have the angle opposite to this side. Opposite to HC in this triangle is this, and opposite to the same side but in this triangle is this, and the angles are the same. Now, we just proved in the previous problem, remember, A uh, is equal to 2R times sine of alpha for a triangle, right? Alpha is an opposite angle to A. Now, applied to these two triangles, this would play the role of A, this piece, this side. In this triangle, the opposite angle is this. In this triangle, opposite angle is that. And they're the same. So the sides, side is shared, and the angles, opposite angles are the same. And that's why, considering this formula, I have to have, so A is the same, and sine is the same, so R is supposed to be the same. So that's why R for both these triangles uh, are the same, the radius is a circumscribed circle, because it's expressed in terms of this. Side is shared, and angles are the same. That's why the radiuses are the same. That's it. And the last problem, which I would like to present in this introductory lecture about trigonometry applied to uh, geometric properties of the triangle, is how to express um, the area of a triangle in terms of radius of a circumscribed circle and angles. So I have angles, three angles, and I have radius. Well, this is easy. Again, let's connect these guys. So, as before, if this is an angle beta, this is an angle beta because this is the half of the central angle, which is supported by the same arc as this inscribed angle. Similarly here, if this is gamma, then this is gamma as well, and this obviously. And this is alpha. 
OK? Now, the area of a triangle can be now divided into six small triangles, right? And pairs are exactly the same. And this is the right triangle. Each one of them is the right triangle. What do I know about this right triangle? I know hypotenuse, which is R. In all cases, hypotenuses are R. And I know the angles, basically, this angle. And angle is enough with a hypotenuse angle, it's, it, it is enough to determine both catheters, both catheters, right? So, for instance, the triangle M N O P, triangle A O M, has area this catheters times this catheters divided by two, right? <coughs> if this is R and this is beta, then one catheter is R sine beta, another is R uh, cosine beta, and divided by two. That's the area of one triangle, right? Now, the area of another triangle is exactly the same. So both of them together have this area, right? This is AOC now. Similarly, for a triangle uh, BOC, I have R sine alpha times R cosine alpha. And for triangle AOB, I have R sine gamma, R cosine gamma. Now, total area, I have to sum them together, which is R squared times sine cosine, sine cosine, sine cosine. What is sine times cosine of an angle? You remember that sine of two of of two phi is equal to two sine phi cosine of phi, right? So sine times cosine is half of the sine of a double angle. So I will uh, put one half in front of it, and instead of sine cosine alpha, I will put sine of 2 alpha plus sine of 2 beta plus sine of 2 gamma. So that's the formula. This is total area. By the way, I'm using the letter S for area. You can add this to all the other symbolics which I'm going to use. I would like to use it more or less uh, wherever I can. So that's the result of expressing the area of a triangle in terms of the radius of circumscribed circle and, uh, and angles. Now, there are many more problems in the same category which I'm going to present you. I'm not sure present many problems, but as much as I can. Um, and all of them, um, they are it, it, very, very educational quality. So um, I'm encouraging you as much as I can to spend some time and try to solve these problems yourself. They are very educational, so to speak. They are very well in developing your ingenuity and creativity. So all the subsequent uh, lectures in this particular uh, chapter of the course related to trigonometry and geometry together, um, all of them are very, very important for you to be able to solve yourself. Now, um, after this lecture is completed, um, try to basically to do exactly the same with these problems. So it would just, you know, kind of remind you exactly how, how it can be solved um, if, if you didn't do it yourself before. Um, as everything else, uh, this lecture is on unizor.com, which uh, um, you are welcome to, to, to visit this site. And what's important is if you register with this uh, website, and uh, there is also some supervisor or, or your parent actually um, uh, registered as, as, as a supervisor for you, then you will be able to, to uh, take exam. Your supervisor, your parent, will be able to enroll 
uh, you in uh, different uh, topics, so you will be able to go through exam, and uh, you will see the results of your education yourself by basically checking the score on the exam. And exams can be just taken any number of times. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, the site is completely free, so everything is available. Basically, that's it for today. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll try to put as many um, other problems in the future lectures. Thank you. Goodbye.